neglect mortality. So sometimes um, these mortality rates depend on, on duration uh, as well as uh, the age um, of, of a life. So the duration would mean the duration um, since exemption uh, of a particular policy. And um, these rates are, are then uh, described as uh, select rates. So just uh, taking in context of a life insurance, of a life assurance, uh, for example, a person who has just been accepted for life insurance, uh, ins insurance is called a newly, a newly select life. This would just basically mean that uh, the person has undergone uh, medical underwriting and um, uh, the duration now is the time that has elapsed uh, since um, uh, policy was taken out. So the initial rate of uh, mortality of a life aged um, X plus R uh, who took out uh, policy uh, exactly R years ago uh, is denoted by um, Q X in, in, in brackets plus R. So the brackets just mean that uh, it's a select life. So uh, generally we expect that um, uh, the, um, the mortality for these select lives uh, is lower than um, uh, lives of the same age um, who like uh, have been accepted for, for a life assurance policy several years ago. Uh, this is because they would have undergone uh, medical underwriting. So once a policy has been in force for a number of years, um, the duration will no longer be, be significant um, and will no longer have a significant impact on uh, mortality rates. So for the AM92 mortality tables, uh, it has a two-year select period. So, um, that uh, is, is what it means for, for, for the select lives um, under the tables that we'll be using. So, after that two year period, um, it would be just ultimate mortality for, for everyone. So, I had um, a few questions uh, for people to attempt. Mm, using uh, the MI92 table. So I can give um, people just five minutes. Okay, I'm just seeing some comments in the comment section. I think this is fine. So just for the benefit of those, possibly those who tried working out the, the, the questions, um, I'll just share my screen with uh, just showing um, the workings. So for the last uh, four questions, if you did something like this, uh, you would be in the right direction. So, yeah. So in terms of the solutions, I can even share after the lecture for the benefit of everyone. So I will just move on to... to the next concept. So we are now looking at non-integer ages and uh, time periods. So uh, for example, um, if you're asked uh, to calculate uh, the probability of this, uh, of a person aged 70.5 years 
uh, surviving up to 2.75 years uh, using the mortality table, you are not able to evaluate uh, this kind of um, the probability. So you'd first have to split up the time uh, interval uh, at integer ages. So you can see here, I tried to illustrate um, drawing a timeline. Uh, so you see, I've split the time uh, ages uh, into integer ages. So uh, it will be 70.5, um, then to 71, then to 72, 73, then 73.25. So you see to get to 73.25 um, age, uh, you would multiply these survival probabilities here below. So this would be 70.5 uh, um, for a life age to 70.5 surviving for uh, 0 0.5 years up to 71. And then the person surviving for another two years to 73. Then the person surviving another 0 0.25 years uh, to reach to 73.25. So you see that if you split this up, uh, it will be written as uh, P 0 0.5, 0 0.5 P 70.5 times 2 P 71 times 0 0.25 P 73. So what we need to do uh, in this case is uh, to make an assumption about the pattern of mortality between uh, the integer ages. Uh, that is uh, 70 to 71, 71 to 72. And um, um, the assumptions that are normally uh, used uh, is the, we assume that there's a uniform distribution of deaths uh, between the integer ages, or we assume that there is a constant force of mortality between uh, the integer ages. So for the um, uniform distribution of dates between integer ages, to ju we just simplify it as UDD. Um, it assumes that um, LX plus T decreases linearly from age X to age X plus one. So when you are given um, a probability, um, a death probability, which is TQX, um, where t is between 0 and 1, uh, it will evaluate to t times qx, where x is, is, is the age uh, of the individual and it is an integer. <laughs> so to evaluate this uh, probability, what you need to do is, um, since we have split up um, this initial probability, here uh, into three parts. Uh, so we evaluate the last one, the last probability 0 0.25 P73 um, using this formula T times QX. So uh, 0 0.25 P73 is equivalent to one minus 0 0.25 Q73. So using the, um, uh, assumption that there is uniform distribution of dates uh, between the integer ages, this would be one minus 0 0.25 times Q73. So Q73, you will be just looking it up um, in your tables, um, whichever tables you would be asked to use, be it uh, EL tables or M A M92 tables uh, using the um, the concepts that uh, I described earlier. Uh, so now to evaluate um, this probability, 0 0.5 uh, P uh, 70.5, this just basically means uh, the probability of an individual aged 70.5 uh, years survives another uh, uh, for another half year, 0 0.5 years. So if you draw your timeline, 
you see that from 70 uh, to 0. Uh, to 70.5 this would be the probability of zero would be um, a person aged 70 surviving um, another half year and from zero point from 70.5 years uh, to 71 this would be the probability of a person from surviving um, who is aged 70.5 years up to 71. So the probability from 70 to 71 will be just P70. So you see this is the formula for P70. So you find that we want to make now this probability with, um, with the decimals, um, the subject of the formula using this equation you see that this now evaluates to um, 0 0.5 P70.5 equal to P70 over 0 0.5 P70. So remember that uh, we are using this formula, uh, T times QX, um, if we assume that uh, there is a uniform distribution of dates are between integer ages, that is between ages 70 and 71. So this will now solve to, uh, P70 will now be one minus Q70, then uh, 0 0.5 P70 will now be one minus 0 0.5 times Q70. So these values, um, Q70, you can easily extract them from your mortality tables. And uh, that's how you evaluate this probability. And uh, the probability for a person aged 71 surviving for another two years, that is uh, 2P71, you find that uh, this, you, you, you can easily evaluate it uh, using the tables, using the LX uh, functions. So, uh, this is uh, easily uh, evaluated using the formulas in the tables. Then this one, you use the, um, the UDD assumption. In this one, you also use it, uh, the UDD assumption. So getting this probability, you multiply this probability and that probability and that probability to get your, your answer. Alternatively, to you can just use um, this uh, formula where it says uh, T S uh, Q X plus S equal to this. So S and T should be um, between zero and one, and T should be greater than S um, for this formula to apply. For those interested in um, deriving this uh, formula, uh, they can always refer to materials, uh, the CM1 materials or CT5 um, materials. Uh, but what is basically needed is just the application of this concept uh, when you are given a particular um, a question to answer. So I'm going to move on to the next um, concept, the constant force of mortality concept. So um, the result that would be used here is uh, TPX is equal to um, exponential um, minus the integral of from zero to T of um, mu x plus sds so this is the result that is used so you just have to know that then this simplifies to tpx uh, equal to e minus t mu um so when you want to 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 solve um, um solutions for for these particular probabilities since uh, mu is constant um the there wouldn't be a problem uh what will just be changing is the t part um in the tpx function so for 0 0.25 uh p 73 
you'll find that um, if you want to solve this, you use the integral function is illustrated. And then um, you now have uh, e to the power minus 0 0.25 mu. And you take out the 0 0.25 uh, and you have e minus mu. And uh, your e minus mu is basically p73. So you evaluate it using your table and you just um, use uh, 0 point to the power 0 0.25. Then similarly for, for 0 0.5 uh, p 70.5, you use the integral function and you use the limits and you see that it also evaluates to, to the same issue. So, um, 2p71 is evaluated the same way under the, the UDD assumption. So I can, uh, um, I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed to a question. No questions for my end. Okay, so I will share the slides um, with them. So it's key to know uh, this uh, concept. Um, I'm getting feedback. Hello. So I'm going to the to the question. So this question uh, says that uh, for a certain group of pensioners, um, uh, Q75 is equal to 0 0.5 and Q76 is equal to 0 0.06. Calculate the probability that a pensioner uh, aged exactly uh, 75 who die between the ages uh, 75.5 and 76.5 assuming a uniform distribution of dates between consecutive birthdays and a constant force of mortality between consecutive birthdays. So from the formulas that I've just illustrated, um, I can allow people to, to answer this question. Um, five minutes. 